now I have the running gear bolted to the front of the car. Both of the wheels are on and the um, car can be dropped down um, and slung as it is at the front. Now the next thing to do is to move onto the back. Um, I managed to drag the rear axle in so I need to clean all that up and um, get that on the car as well. I managed to get the rear axle assembly on on my own just about it took a bit of fighting but um, yeah it's got the jack under there on a wheel and um, jigged it around so the order I'm doing the next part is the reason I'm putting this axle on before I put the fuel tank in is I'm going to basically make it a rolling shell and then weight it down so that it can settle on the suspension and then once I know the height and where the wheels sit I can do some measurements make sure it's all um, aligned correctly and then I can make the start making the body kit <laughs> any work on the body kit I need to get the doors the boot and the bonnet and make sure they fit so to get the doors to fit obviously I need to take the door cards out gut the doors so they'll fit with the door bars on the roll cage. it's actually too far back and once you're in the seat you're not going to be able to get to it easily so um, I undecided whether I'll leave that in there yet but I can probably take out more um, of the metal around here and I'm going to leave the doors so you can still lock them so these still operate properly and I, heck, I can use a key in both the driver and passenger door so I don't have to have the central locking but I can still lock the door if I'm going to use it as a road car as well. Next I'm going to have a look at the boot lid. I need to figure out exactly where I'm going to cut the holes in the lower part for the um, extracting the air out from the radiator. So I'll clean this up the best I can. I'll get it on the car and then I can see more accurately where um, things are going to be put.
was to get the front wings of the Peugeot to fit on the Subaru chassis leg, I need to take some of this top lip off. Now I can go as far down as I can without taking off obviously the spot welds out of that joint. So all I need is a few extra millimeters just to get this panel to drop slightly lower down so it will align with the bonnet. Now that we have both front wings loosely zip tied onto the car, now it's time for the tricky bit which is getting the front bumper um, aligned without any mounting points. So um, yeah, it should be fun. At the moment I'm just getting all the panels on the car. Um, panel gaps like this, it's not too important because obviously the body kit will be a completely different shape. The main thing I'm trying to do at the moment is just to get the panel gaps somewhere lined up, basically get it all squared and, and straight on the car, um, ready for modifying because obviously the wings will be wider. So um, so these, these gaps are important but the bits that are going to be changed completely um, I'm not actually too worried about. Instead of getting the bumper anywhere close to fit to the front wings, I need to first take out the fog lamps and the bottom plastic um, stone guard and then a few other bits on the inside like the brackets. I can still see that there needs to be some modifications made to the frame on the Subaru. I'm still about um, 100 mil off um, as far as bringing the bumper into the car. Um, and also, I have to bear in mind, I can't actually just cut this piece off here and shorten it because the engine actually sits down inside lower than the frame. So if I say I cut this off here and just put a straight piece further in, it will actually foul the engine. So what I'll need to do is actually cut this one away and just leave the amount I can without making it too weak and then I can reinforce this afterwards. So I'll start cutting this piece away. One of the advantages of doing a rattle can paint job is you don't feel guilty when you have to start cutting the car apart again. Now the front end is loosely cable tied in place, there's not a lot of room inside um, as you can imagine. Obviously we're doing away with the radiator so there's just the intercooler to go in the front end um, but even still there's um, not a lot of room once the headlights are in. I'm even considering mounting the front of the bumper or the front bumper slightly further forward to the front of the car. Um, it's easily done and at this stage it, um, it's probably a good idea to eliminate any problems further down the road. Next up I'll get the headlights and um, clean them up, put them in the car and then that will give me an idea where if everything aligns um, correctly. Initially the alignment is pretty good um, at the centre of the front. The bonnet alignment to the front uh, grill's good. I think the gap needs to be sort of slightly different but obviously everything can move still. Um, and there's plenty of adjustment. I've set the bumper slightly further forward um, 
This is for a couple of reasons. It's to alleviate room for the larger wheel um, around the front. Also, it is um, this area here is going to make a good platform for the the aero on the arch. Basically, it's going to be extended, and then we'll have a wide flat piece rolling up over the top of the arch. So that's a good platform, um, basically, to get the air brushed over the sides and around. So. Um, that's another reason. So that's the look from the back with the boot and the bumper on. I'm still playing with ideas on how I'm going to put the vents in the boot lid. I'm more than likely going to actually reduce the size of the rear window and have um, to, to allow more area for vents without disturbing the number plate and light and badge area because I want to keep that as standard. To make any kind of start on the body kit, first I need to get all the panels secure so they won't move. So there's a fair bit of work to do to get all these in line and um, secure enough so I can start um, putting some weight on them, start sort of handling them without them uh, moving at all.